Hello guys, hope all of you are doing well. Today I'm going to explain semantics, the other branch of linguistics. But before we start, and let me share my screen to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Semantics that we are going to study today or we are going to understand today, inshallah. Uh, we know that semantics is the branch of linguistics, okay? But in this branch of linguistics, what do we do? We actually, uh, in semantics, what we study? We study of meaning. Meaning of what? We study of meaning of words, first of all. Then we see that how these words combine with phrases and how does it give the meaning that we study in semantics. And after that, we study the meaning of sentences. How the entire words together combine together into phrases and phrases combine together into a sentence and how does a sentence literally give some meaning of a semantic that we study in semantics, okay? Now see, uh, in semantic analysis, there is always an attempt to focus on what the words conventionally mean rather than on what an individual speaker might want to mean on a particular occasion. For example, there is one more branch of linguistics that is called pragmatics that also studies the meaning, okay? In pragmatics also we study meaning, but we study meaning beyond the sentence. When we study pragmatics, we study meaning beyond the sentence. For example, if we, uh, if we speak a word, uh, wrinkle cream, okay? Literally, it means the cream which, which in, increases wrinkle, right? But do we have same meaning? If we ask any uh, pharmacist to give wrinkle cream, do we want to increase our wrinkles? Of course not. Wrinkle cream means the cream which uh, decreases uh, or prevents wrinkles, right? The same goes with if a doctor writes uh, pain pills. Pain pills, it sounds like the pill to increase pain, but actually pain pills means the pills to decrease or to kill pain, right? So anyways, this we study in pragmatics. Now we are talking about semantics. In semantics, we actually study the literal meaning of a word, okay? Now, when we study semantics, we actually uh, study it two ways. Number one is conceptual meaning. We see the conceptual meaning of the word, and then we see associated meaning of the word. Now, what is this conceptual meaning and associated meaning? Meaning is just meaning, right? But actually we have, you know, I will let you know that what is this two types of meaning. Conceptual meaning is actually uh, the meaning which is uh, literally, which gives the literal meaning of a word, which is generally any dictionary keeps. If you, you know, find the meaning of a word into a dictionary, Whatever the meaning is there into the dictionary, that is called conceptual meaning. It is a concept, cognitive meaning or conceptual meaning. We believe it, okay? For example, if you see the word, uh, the meaning of the word into a dictionary, needle, what does it mean? Needle means any thin, sharp, steel instrument, okay? This is the meaning written in dictionary. Any thin, sharp, steel instrument can be called needle, right? But Different people may associate it with different way, right? For example, if you ask a, to a small kid about needle, hmm, what he will say, he will associate it with pain. Needle something, oh my God, something, something to hurt, something painful. If you ask needle to, uh, from any nurse, hmm, she will associate it with drugs, with blood, okay? Or uh, if you ask about needle to any tailor, or any, any uh, you know, fashion designer or any tailor, they will say like, if you ask needle, they will think about, okay, needle means thread, something to stitch, right? So this way, different person may associate the same word needle in different way. They may have different meaning, right? For someone, they may think of needle, something, something very difficult to find, especially in uh, hay, uh, you know, hay stack or somewhere something very difficult to find, okay? So this way, what happens that one conceptual word, one word which has a particular conceptual meaning can be associated in different way by different people, right? So this type of associations, 
which is not related to the conceptual meaning we call it associative meaning it it is associate means different people associated with different way and it in, it is interpreted in different way okay so we call it associative meaning so this way i hope you understood the difference between conceptual meaning and associative meaning now we now we know that there are two types of meaning can come of a word clear now we will see semantic analysis how do we analyze a semantic so first of all when we study about semantic analysis we should see that we are there are three ways of analyzing semantics first of all we analyze it by features we see semantic features we also call it lexical features right then we analyze the same meanings by role semantic role means how words play different roles into a sentence when we write a word how different particular kind of phrases or words what role they play to make a sentence a complete sentence <clears throat> okay next we see semantic relations what are the relations between different words into a sentences or how the one phrase is related to another phrase into a sentence and how does it give a meaning that we see in semantic relations right so this uh, we will see one by one but first of all in this lecture today we will see semantic features how can we analyze semantic feature what does it mean semantic feature now let's check let's see the example suppose we see the sentence the hamburger ate the boy do you think it is correct sentence if you analyze it syntactically i don't think there is any mistake there is anything wrong syntactically the sentence is correct okay let's check another sentence also the table listens to the radio one more sentence the horse is reading the newspaper so what's wrong there is something something wrong right something is odd we cannot say wrong but we can say something is odd being a english speaker not even speaker being an english learner we can even understand that this sentence is not right the sentence is not correct there is something wrong right so what is wrong syntactically when we say if we see the structure of the sentence what we notice the hamburger ate the boy the hamburger is what the hamburger is a noun phrase that any sentence must have then we have a verb and then we have object, object noun phrase right so any sentence must have this three component in order to complete a sentence we should have a subject noun phrase then we should have a verb and then we should have a have an object noun phrase this sentence also has the same then what's wrong so what do we notice that it is not wrong but it is odd semantically syntactically the sentence is absolutely correct but semantically the sentence is not correct semantically meaning wise our mind our heart doesn't believe that the sentence can be acceptable it means that what do we understand here means whatever the subject noun phrase is it must have the feature to do the action of eating in the sentence it means that whenever we write any sentence see this is what i have written here the crucial element or feature of meaning that any noun must have in order to be used as a subject noun phrase of the verb eat means that for any sentence when we are writing the subject noun phrase must have that feature that quality of performing the action that we are using in that sentence whatever the action is okay if we say the boy is going to the school we can still think it's correct the the horse is going the horse is running then also we can understand it's correct but if i see the table is running of course not it means that the subject noun phrase should be able to run means whatever the action whatever the verb we are using the subject noun phrase should have the feature should have the quality to perform that action so if we have that quality what we do we use plus sign in order to show having that quality or that feature if we do not if we see that that word that particular subject noun phrase or that word doesn't have that feature to perform that action we use it as minus sign we give it minus sign 
fine. So this is the two signs we use. So if we see the previous sentence, the hamburger ate the boy. What do we notice? So the feature that the noun boy has is plus animate, denotes an animate being. And the feature that the noun hamburger has is minus animate, means that uh, does not uh, denote an animate being means hamburger cannot eat the boy at any cost if i say the sentence the lion ate the boy then also at least we can believe that yes it can happen because the lion has the feature of eating something even it can eat the boy all right the lion has this feature but if i say the hamburger ate the boy this cannot be true because boy can eat hamburger boy is animate being it can eat even if I say the goat ate hamburger, if I say the dog ate hamburger, then also we can believe because they are the animate being. They have the feature of eating. They have the quality of eating so they can eat. But the hamburger instead eat the boy. This is odd semantically. Hamburger or table cannot eat anything. They do not have this feature, this eating feature they do not have. Clear? Now... Yeah, this is called semantic feature. This example is illustrates the procedure of anal analyzing any meaning of a word through semantic feature. So the feature that one should, one word must have this feature or not. Now, if we have to, uh, you know, provide the crucial distinguishing features of the meaning of the set of some English words, such as table, horse, boy, man, girl, women, how can we uh, tell? So we will use this diagram. Okay, suppose we have to say the features of table, horse, boy, man, girl, women. What are the basic features they should have? Either they should be animate, they should be human, they should be female, or they should be adult. Now we will analyze it. So if we talk about fe uh, the feature of table, do you think table can be animate? Can ever be table animate? Can it walk? Can it breathe? Can it, can it eat? No, it cannot be. So we give minus sign for table okay let's talk about horse can horse be animate yes horse can be animate so we will give plus sign for this can boy be animate yes boy can be animate so we can again give plus sign for it can man be animate yes of course man can be animate so we can give plus sign for this girl can be animate so plus sign will be used even women can be animate so we will use plus sign for this right now let's come to human this can table be human in any any situation can we think that table can be human of course not so again we will give minus sign in front of table for human so means table doesn't have the feature to be human so for uh, table we can say that it is minus human this is the feature for uh, table right now horse can horse be human no so horse cannot be human. horse can be animate but it cannot be human so we will write minus sign in front of this boy can boy be human of course boys are human so boy can be human man man can be human so we will have plus sign girl of course girl can be human so we will have plus sign women can be human of course sometimes people forget that but <laughs> women can be human women are human so we write uh, we give plus sign here right now let's move to table again can table be female no table cannot be female so we give minus sign for table right horse can be female no if horse is female we call it male horse means male right male horse is called horse otherwise we call it male so horse cannot be female boy can be female if boys are female, we will name it girl. So boy cannot be female. So we give minus sign. Man can be female. Of course not. That is why we will give minus sign. Girl, girls are female. Women, women are female. So we will give plus sign for both of them, right? Table can be adult. No. So minus sign will be given. Horse can be adult. Yes. So we will give plus sign for horse. Boy can be adult. If boy is adult, we call call him man we do not call him boy right so boy means the the small boy the young you know teenagers boy we call them so it can be it means we will give minus sign for this man yes man can be adult girl 
again if girl is adult we call her women we do not call her girl anymore so girl cannot be adult women women is adult of course so we call them women so this is the way of analyzing features this is the way of denoting features for 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 something having we give plus sign for something not having we give minus sign okay having what having features of that particular thing or quality of that particular thing right this from a feature analysis like this we can say that at least part of the air the meaning of the word girl in english involves the element it should be plus human plus female and minus adult clear now let's check suppose if right if i write a sentence the dash is reading the newspaper okay i think there is a mistake the is i have written it should be the dash is is will come here the dash is reading the newspaper so what should be the subject noun phrase what should what whatever the word we use over here this this should be this should have a particular feature right what the particular feature this should have that that noun should be plus human if i write plus animate suppose if i write here the feature plus animate will it be correct because animate can include horses dogs any animal also if i say the dog or the monkey re is reading newspaper can you believe so what happens that okay this is a modern world you know you can uh, what i say uh train any monkey and you can make him sit for some it's some time but it's not possible right so in order to perform the action of reading the noun must be human right so how we will write it should be noun plus human this feature this noun must have that it should have plus human feature plus human quality in order to perform the action of reading clear so what we notice that in this way like table horse and hamburger cannot be used as a subject noun phrase in this sentence because none of them have the required feature plus human which who can perform the action of reading clear so this is what we have seen till now in uh, semantic features this is what we have we have we are, we are supposed to understand in semantic features now inshallah in the next class we will do uh, i don't know what happened to my mouse yeah next class inshallah we will do uh, semantic uh, roles we will see semantic roles okay and then yes next class inshallah we will do semantic roles i hope you understand the lectures that i give and uh, inshallah um, we will discuss if you if we have any doubt we can share our i mean uh, we will find out the way if you can ask me the questions well so next class uh, will be on semantic role okay what are the roles that a word play or lexical role also we say that we will see inshallah in the next class till then see you bye bye take care